Hi, welcome to Manas Shiel YouTube channel. Before we start kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Let's start the video. If you haven't watched the previous video, I link it in the description box, or you can click here. Chapter 2. A Short-Lived Everyday Life. Carrion vs. Floor Guardians. Even so, Gatter seems to have beaten him to the punch. The comparison of existence values is. Disclosing information about Gatter's. Name, Gatter, existence points, 1,126,666. Race, Greater Chaos Spirit, Metal Demon. Blessing, Black Primordial, War. Title, Servant Number 2 Pachi. Magic, Dark Magic, Elemental Magic, Skill, Ultimate Gift, Grimoire. Resistance, Physical Attack Nullification, Abnormal Condition Nullification, Mental Attack Nullification, Natural Effects Nullification, Holy Demonic Attack Resistance. I found a lot of things to complain about, but I'm too tired to talk about them, so I'll leave it at that. For now, I'll discuss the comparison with Ser, but it looks like Gadra outperforms him by up alone. To be honest, I didn't expect him to be this strong. Gadra wasn't that strong, before he was reborn. His knowledge of magic was outstanding, and his skill, level, was remarkable, but he was not a threat, if we judged him only in terms of combat. He was cunning and troublesome. If he was going to be an adversary, he should be the first to go for. That was my true evaluation. With that in mind, Gadra did the right thing. He's still alive, and he's in my direct line of command. And he's even surpassed Saint Ser in direct combat ability. Ser's omnipotent one is also troublesome, but it's surprisingly easy to deal with. All you have to do, is to challenge it in a straightforward manner. You can overwhelm it with physics, without the use of art or magic. Even if you do use them, you should do so in a timely manner to avoid being imitated. It is said, the Ser was defeated by Hinata, but I can guess the reason. Hinata would never be careless, so she must have fought without exposing her cards to Ser. In that case, he would have lost the advantage of the unique skill, because he had nothing to learn. And this time. The decisive difference in Gadra's case must have been the presence or absence of the ultimate gift. Gadra was cunning, so he might not have shown Ser his hidden tricks. But even if he had, Ser would not have been able to imitate it. Because the unique level cannot compete with the ultimate level. With that in mind, I realize once again that being able to give an ultimate gift to a subordinate like me must be quite the foul move. Incidentally, the power of the ultimate gift Grimoire was very similar to that of a Dolman's Necronomicon. This included Thought Acceleration, Universal Perception, Demon Lord Hockey, Chant Cancellation, Analyze and Assess, All of Creation, Mental Crush, Knowledge Browsing, and Concept Sharing. Knowledge Browsing seems to be an ability to learn from Seal San. And Concept Sharing seems to be the right to share with the Dolman. Well, like Seal San, it seemed to be a skill that embodied Gadra's desires. Anyway, I understand why Gadra is stronger than Ser. I also now have a rough idea of how powerful Ser is. As I recall, the Holy Knight Order had been working hard to conquer the Labyrinth, but was their current ranking at Apito's level. That was before Dalman's evolution, so it's not very useful. I heard that they came to visit us recently, and that he had collected some data. Arno and Reynold were extremely strong, with existence values of nearly 500,000. The remaining captains were also around 300,000 each, and seemed to have grown significantly compared to their initial levels. Since they were in the same level range as Grigori, it would be interesting to have them form a party. Ser, on the other hand, had the advantage of learning the arts easily, so it might be better to leave it to Hakir. He could be a good training partner for the children, and I thought he could also learn a lot in our country. Of course, that should be kept confidential. And so, the training plan for Ser and Grigori was decided. For the time being, I decided to let Ser and Grigori familiarize themselves with the labyrinth. Benimaru had been informed of the training plan, and would be sent to his own place, when the time was right. Will I be taking care of them again? I'm counting on you. It's sudden with Hakuru, so there might be some confusion, right? Well, that's true. But we're all in the same situation, and I think you're being too overprotective. Benimaru chuckled. You may have a point, but they are our guests. If they had immigrated to our country, I would not have allowed them to be too unreasonable. More importantly, speaking of training. So, what's the status of Carrion and the others? Ha, huh, things are getting interesting over there. As soon as Benimaru said that, Seal San disclosed the information. Name, Carrion. Existence points, 2,773,537. Race, Beast God, Jushin. Greater Chaos Spirit, Light Spirit Beast. Name, Free. Existence points, 1,948,734. Race, Bird God, Chaojin. 
Greater Chaos Spirit, Sky Spirit Bird. The Labyrinth, it's dangerous. All of the existence values and personal information is completely visible. Carrion and Free San have evolved and took on a divine nature. Free San's existence value is less than 2 million, but she seems to have met the requirements for divinity. I guess it is within the margin of error. Their skills and resistances are unknown, but there is no way to know that, unless they tell me. Even so, both of these people have awakened to become true demon lords and are undisputedly strong. In my case, the amount of magic heals had increased tenfold, but Carrion and Free San didn't seem to have increased by that much. Or rather, there seemed to be individual differences. My impression is that Carrion's pre-evolutionary value was around 700,000, and Free San's was less than 400,000. Assuming that I'm right, Carrion's strength has increased fourfold, and Free San's strength has increased fivefold. Well, in my case, it's because the original values were low, wasn't it? If you think about it, it's natural. We should consider not how many times the original value has increased, but rather how much it has increased. It was not wrong to say that the greater the existence value, the greater the power when awakened. Now, let's analyze their strength based on this information. Carrion's physical abilities nearly tripled when he transformed, but I don't think they doubled if we converted them into existence values. I was thinking that it was probably just an ability boost for a certain amount of time. That's why I believe that shape-shifting was not completely foolproof. Because if you transformed, you would become weaker after the time limit. This is true, not only for Carrion, but also for Gabble and the others. Otherwise, the best idea would be to maintain the transformed state at all times. However, there were still many advantages to transforming, such as the healing of all wounds and the full recovery of physical strength. These are characteristics unique to Beastmen, so I don't mean to make fun of them. In short, it depends on how you use it. So, in the case of the evolved Carrion, how well is he able to use his power? What's he like now? Yes. First up was Carrion Dono, who I took on first for revenge. What? You know, I led a team to Eurasania once. I was no match for him then. That's why I wanted to see how strong I had become now, and to test myself against Carrion Dono, who had awakened. Um, I think you've got it backwards. I was planning to have Carrion and the others test their strength to the fullest. I wondered why Benimer was testing his own strength, but after thinking about it, I didn't see the problem. Benimer got serious, and Carrion gave it his all. In the environment of the labyrinth, where no one dies, this seemed to be a very interesting combination. I'm sure Amaris and the others were recording it, so I'll watch it later. With that, I decided to ask about the result first. The one? By a narrow margin, me. Oh, that's good. While I admired him, I was actually slightly troubled by the reaction. For some reason, I realized that I hadn't doubted Benimer's victory, and I was upset when I heard that it was a close call. But it was a close call. How did that happen? At any rate, I asked him. Before Benimer could reply, an image appeared in my mind. It seems that Carrion made the first move. As expected of Seal Sen. It looks like she got the information right away. And as Seal Sen explained, it was Carrion who moved first in the video. At the moment he raised his weapon, and sank in a flowing manner, Carrion's entire body turned into light. It was not a metaphor, but a real particle that attacked Benimer. Carrion named it Burst Roar. It is an illusionary diffusion-focused particle cannon that can transform his own body into willful particles that pierces the enemy. So, it has a will then. It means that Carrion had also awakened and acquired the characteristics of his spiritual life form. It was also understandable that the light that had followed Benimer swallowed him up. The moment the game started, I got chills, or rather, I sensed that it was going to be dangerous. So, I decided that this was not the time to wait and see, and activated my heat haze. Benimer's heat haze is a power that can be called the ultimate secret of Formide. It prevents any attack from catching you, so it will only work if you have the ultimate skill on top of it. However, if that had not been activated, Benimer would have lost in the first move. After all, Carrion embodied a speed several hundred times faster than the speed of sound, comparable to that of Valgren's super speed attack. Benimer's evasion of the attack was amazing, but there was nothing he could do if he had been tracked from there. It was because of his ultimate skill Heat King, Amaterasu, that he was able to withstand this. Your intuition and your ultimate skill were the difference between victory and defeat. Yes, it was a close call. I was so proud of myself that I thought I could win more easily, so it was a good reminder for me. That's right. I didn't doubt you'd win, so I had mixed feelings about it. After all, carelessness and pride can lead to defeat. It's hard to be aware of, so I'm grateful you realized this before the showdown. Yes. Even if I'm aware of it, I can be unconsciously proud of it. That's why it's called carelessness, but it can be scary. Exactly. We were grateful to Carrion for reminding us of our lack of awareness. After reflecting with Benimeru, I relaxed with the Café au Late Brood by Shuna and listened to the rest. Did you fight with Free San? No, I think Free Dono saw us fighting, and decided she couldn't win. 
She seems like the type who hates wasting time. I see, so that's how it is. I nodded my head, agreeing with Benimaru's conclusion. Frisan is not particularly belligerent, so I can understand her reaction. Besides, I had heard Milam complaining about Frisan's meticulous nature. I've heard that she's been having a lot of trouble with it, but it's none of my business, so I'll just ignore it. After that, it was a matter of trying to conquer the labyrinth to see how far they could go. If you want to test your strength, that's probably the quickest way. Yes. Each one started at the 51st level, individually. As Benimaru explained, images began flooding my mind. Seal San is a being of many talents. First, Carrion. The power that affected Benimaru was serious, and he continued to make good progress. The 60th level was cleared easily due to Gadger's absence. Though at this rate, even if he had stayed, he would have been defeated. That's how unstoppable Carrion's momentum was. He also fought Adalman and the others, who happened to be back to adjust the magic transfer circle, as a test of his skill. As a result, he easily defeated them, even though it was three against one. That wasn't surprising. He was using Burst Roar generously, so Adalman and the others had no time to take countermeasures. When he acted as the shield, Albert as the ranger, and Adalman as the attacker. That combination fell apart when Wenty was first defeated. Carrion then went after the troublesome Adalman, leaving Albert behind. The way he fought was reminiscent of a lion on the hunt. It is the female lion that does most of the hunting. I know that. Seal San's explanation is very useful, but sometimes it makes me feel like a fool. It's always been that way, even since the days of the Great Sage, right? I'll be careful. Really, please do, I nodded, greatly offended. So, back to the topic at hand. Carrion's burst roar was incredibly powerful. Adalman had a light attribute, but Carrion was also a light attribute. There was no difference between them, so it was just a matter of simple strength. The interesting to notice here was that Adalman has an ultimate gift. Carrion does not seem to have an ultimate skill, nor does he have mythical great equipment. So, how was he able to beat Adalman? I seem to remember Seal Sans saying that the ultimate level can only be beaten by another ultimate power. I don't remember. Oh, is that so? I feel like I've been deceived, but I'm not so sure either. Carrion also possesses the characteristics of a spiritual life form, so his strength of will must have been able to rival the ultimate power. I see, that makes sense. In other words, Carrion has more offensive power than the multi-layer barrier reinforced by Adalman's Necronomicon. The next opponent to face Carrion Dono was Kumar. Kumar wanted to fight first, so I gave her permission. Well, Zijin is stronger than Kumar, so maybe we should rethink the Labyrinth Floor Guardian placements. Right. And as it turns out, it was a pretty good match. Again, a video was shown. Kumar hadn't shown her tailed beasts, and was going all out from the start. She had heard the news of Adalman and the other's defeat, but seemed to be going into battle without listening to the details. There is a big difference between knowing what the enemy is up to and not knowing. And yet, she dared to challenge the enemy on equal terms. Carrion was superior in existence value. However, Kumar had the ultimate gift beast King Bahamut. Again, Carrion made his first move with a burst roar. This time, it became several flashes of light, aiming at Kumara from all directions. Kumara, on the other hand, flew to the sky and invoked gravity domination. This caused the light to bend due to the super gravity, and Carrion's attack only pierced Kumara's leg. This was not Kumara's intended evasion, but was just her luck. That's why she did not counterattack, but instead prioritized her own recovery. Or is it possible to substitute with the legs of a tailed beast instead? The tailed beasts can be resurrected by Kumara's magic heals, so it would be difficult to disable Kumara with an opponent of the same level. And Karin, who failed in his first attack, had materialized. The particle state, which seemed to be invincible, still had a time limit. And it looks like it cannot be fired repeatedly. Karin did not chase Kumara, but instead kept his distance and set up a white tiger blue dragon strike. Kumara looked down at Karin from above. Karin stared at her, and considered his next move. Their gazes crossed, and in the next moment, a tremor ran through the air. Kumara swooped down to attack Karin, and unleashed a nine-tail piercing strike. Karin responded by concentrating his magic power on the white tiger blue dragon strike, and unleashed a beast roar. It was Kumara who won the clash. The particle cannon fizzled out, and Karin's white tiger blue dragon strike shattered. I will win. Kumara was proud of her victory, and tried to finish Karin off. But that was not to be. How naive. Karin's muttered words came late, after Kumara's heart had been destroyed. Karin's weapon was shattered, but not broken. The shards were controlled by Karian's will, and had become particles that pierced Kumara from behind. The game was won. Karian was not so naive as to let his guard down here. He mercilessly ended the game with a beast roar against Kumara, who had stopped moving. And so Karian don't know one, looks like it. I mean, Kumara has gotten so strong, that it's hard to believe she lost so easily. Well, that's how it goes in a fight. Fortunately, this wasn't the real thing. That's true. Really, I think it was a good experience for Kumara. 
Such a display of Carrion's prowess made us all feel very remorseful about ourselves. We've been too prideful. The idea of taking care of Carrion Dono was very presumptuous. There were many things to teach, and I learned a lot from him. Well, yes. Some people say that teaching others is like being given an opportunity to realize what you lack. I think he meant that, if someone asks you something you don't know, you should look it up immediately and use it to your advantage. In this case, I felt that he learned how to fight more carefully by training with Carrion in actual combat. Carrion seemed to be getting more and more sophisticated in his fighting style. If Kumara had taken him on before Adalman, the odds would have been more likely to be reversed. That was how well Carrion had developed. Well, I guess Zijin was in danger too. I couldn't imagine Zijin being defeated, but at this rate, oh, that was out of the question. A. Eh? Facing off, Carrion Dono was the first to set up, the image played out. The battle was instantaneous. Before Carrion could turn into particles, no, that's wrong. Immediately after Zijin smiled at him, as if he were an illusion, Carrion's entire body was cut into pieces. Instant kill, what is Zijin really? To be honest, it's almost a miracle that I was able to beat him. If I tried now, I don't think I could win. Benamer chuckled. He may have been being modest, but if Benamer, who hated to lose, was saying as much, then Zijin truly was exceptional. If Zijin had been defeated here, it would have required a fundamental review of our defense system. Zijin doesn't seem to be very prideful. We've reaffirmed our own lack of awareness, but that seems unnecessary for Zijin. Agreed. He's extremely stoic. It was the most complete victory he's ever had, but he didn't seem satisfied at all, saying this isn't even close to Remuru-sama. I wondered if Zijin was aiming for an imaginary me, I felt very far away. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy it.